All right. Hey, welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm joined by Joyce Ng, and we are talking about the Oscar race, which all of a sudden I feel like is maybe a, a lot less set in certain places than I had expected. I mean, well, definitely in one place. <laughs> well, Best Actress is a complete chaos. You you wrote about it this week. We've talked about it a ton. Uh, when, so when are when, we not talking about Best Actress, though? What like, else could we talk about? I mean, it's like, it's an inc- it's the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, Frances McDormand, since we last spoke, won at the BAFTA Awards, uh, which honestly, I was like, oh, she won because we had jo- talked about maybe uh, that she wouldn't even that uh, you know maybe a Vanessa Kirby could win there in, in a in a shocking upset or uh, the the actress from uh, Rocks whose name I am forgetting Becky Bacray Be- she won she won Rising Star instead right so that was good and, and you know what looking back I was like how did I not pick Becky Bacray to win Rising Star when she was nominated for Best Actress <laughs> instead of Kingsley Benadir which I picked like a, like a fool uh, but yeah no so so Frances McDormand won so that means every major show has had a different winner yes we and had Andre Day this is this World. is like we're 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 teed up for a Marsha Gay Harden-esque win by Vanessa Kirby <laughs> I mean that's kind of what it feels like but I just don't think that'll happen and I and now I'm like so I I, I have Viola Davis still picked on mine and I think uh just feels like she are you, are you gonna stick with her I don't think so uh to be perfectly honest we have a few weeks I guess and voting started you know uh, this week, um, I don't know. I'm just like I know you've had a, you've had an Andrew Day since for a while, and and we've talked a lot about this. And I keep now going, maybe Andrew Day. I mean, I don't know. I think it's going to be I, one of them. I don't think Carrie Mulligan is going to win. No offense to Promising a Woman <laughs> or Carrie Mulligan. I just think it's going to be Vanessa uh, Viola Davis or uh, Andrew Day. Like Andrew is so like interesting because we just don't have enough information about her. Like she's a total wild card. Like they could love her performance or they could just be completely apathetic to it and reject it, reject the movie. But I feel like most people who've seen the movie love it. They definitely love her. Or, like performance. they like yeah. it. Yeah. Like yeah. not they don't love the movie, but they like her and like what she did. So it just depends on like you just have to kind of figure out in your head like how many people do you think watch the movie since her globe win which was what like seven weeks ago i don't even know anymore. yeah it feels like ancient history i think it was in yeah. january when was it glo- oh february it was right? yeah <laughs> the last day of february and yeah. you know she 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 uh you know borrowed a page from mm-hmm. regina king's uh book and she presented at the baftas mm-hmm. um that's what regina did when she was snubbed two years ago so you know she's kind of still you know front of mind because people saw her whoever watched the baftas <laughs> over right, the weekend yeah. um yeah i feel like she has the babyest performance like i'm not like completely set on her but i haven't changed anything since the baftas yet because i feel like any four of them go in no offense vanessa you know it'll be great if she somehow won but i, I feel like baftas basically just kind of confirmed vanessa is fifth <laughs> mm-hmm. so but any of the other four I could, like carrie still has a path because you know, like people expected Promising a Woman to to win original screenplay of BAFTA and also Best British Film. But the thing that's important about that win is that uh, Promising a Woman beat The Father, which had two big wins at BAFTA, adapted screenplay, which was likely, like, I, I don't know mm-hmm. about you, but I predicted it. But, but then it had a huge upset in Best Actor for Anthony Hopkins over Chadwick Boseman. So it was like Promising Woman, which is like less British than The Father and like far less, you know, on paper, less prestige mm-hmm. um, It beat this movie that pulled off a huge upset in one major category. And I also feel like that upset doesn't really bode well for Viola Davis. Cause it's kind of like, when you think about that movie, like Ma Rainey, like, I, I feel like, you know, like Chabot can win without her, but I don't just, the, the way the season's gone with like his sweep that just stopped <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. two days ago and the narrative it's it's like he's like the first honoree of that movie and I don't it'll, like I'm not saying it's impossible for her to win without him but it'll be weird just based on how everything has unfolded and it's you know like Ma Rainey is uh would be the first film without a best picture nomination to win <laughs> both lead categories right. which you know, that was already something we were talking about like last week after it won, you know, double lead SAG awards. So it'll be insane if it won both lead SAGs 
didn't win a single lead BAFTA and then won both lead actor Oscars it would without a best picture yeah. nomination. <laughs> yeah, it definitely would be un unprecedented. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I have Viola still, but I'm like, the more I'm thinking about it now, the more I'm like, yeah, I could see. I, I, I think Andre Day, the thing is, like you said, like people really love her performance. The other thing is that I wonder if the fact that the movie isn't good is actually works in her favor. And no offense, you know, she, no, she, whatever. She, she mean, did what she like elevated it. Like she did what she could with She it. elevated it and it's impossible to watch it. And, and she's so far and away the best thing of the about the movie that you leave it and you're like, well, she's incredible, right? Like even if the yeah. movie was slightly better, maybe you'd be like, oh, she's great and the movie's really good, you know, blah, blah, blah. But like by and large, I haven't talked to one person who's like, that movie's great. And she's great. It's like the movie's fine, generously, and then she's amazing. So that leads me to believe that maybe she does have an inside track. And then if you're, you know, I'm loath to compare performances, but since we're doing that, uh, she's just the whole movie. And like Viola Davis is only in Ma Rainey for like 22 minutes. Or I mean, like the four, the four other nominees, they're in their movie for like an hour and like 20 minutes. Right. And so Viola is yeah. not in her movie very much. Now that there is precedent for her to win, I would imagine, you know, like, like in our pal Nicole Anthony Hopkins won Best Actor, right, for like 25 minutes. And I, and she does similar, similarly cast a large shadow over the film, I would say. But, you know, just in quantity, there's more Andre Day in Billie Holiday than there is Viola Davis in Ma Rainey. So I'm like, you know, maybe it's one of them. The other thing is we've been like anecdotally just like seeing anonymous uh, Oscar voters and like, you know, the to LA Times poll is one this week. And a lot of people really like Andre. De it just seems like people really like Andre. De well, I mean, then, the best part about, about that so far is, is that they, all three of them picked different people. So it's like yes. no clarity. <laughs> well, that actually maybe helps Andre Day too. And like in a wide open race, is it like, did she actually win because like, yeah, there's no front runner. There's no front runner. And people who maybe love Viola Davis are like, you know, and obviously there goes more into this than like just the performance. Like it's like a personnel and there's a whole different bunch of reasons why people would vote for somebody to win an Oscar. You know, Viola Davis, Carrie Mulligan, Frances McDormand, they're all like probably have their own fans within the Academy and factions and they're all going to split each other's vote. And then like, you know, Andre Day wins by just having like a performance that people really love. Uh, so I could definitely see that. It, I, I had... I think that Vanessa Kirby will not win, and I don't think Frances McDormand will win. So I think it's between the three of them. I will say yeah. I found it peculiar uh, that Karen Mulligan hosted as Saturday Night Live this past week as the BAFTAs were happening, and they made no mention of Promising Young Woman. And but, she, but listen, she made lesbian period drama, so she should win for that. <laughs> she made lesbian period drama, which was a, a ripe send up of all uh, Ammonite and Portland Fire. Just raked over the coals. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just like, I don't know, I found it, I found it odd that she didn't, they didn't mention the movie at all. And I'm just like- Yeah, like normally they mention that in at least like the monologue. Yeah, the or even like show. run an ad, right? Like it's, oh, NBC oh, is Air Saturday Night Live, Universal owns Focus, which distributed Promising Young I th Woman. I thought they ran ads. I thought- Did they I run ads? I saw okay. someone tweet that like they ran ads, but it was like, it was just never mentioned on the show that she okay. is in Promising Young Woman. So that seems weird to me. Yeah. It's anecdotal and again doesn't really mean anything, but I'm just like if the idea is for her to host the show so like people are like aware of her and the larger campaigning of it, I just am like, shouldn't you mention the movie that she's not made for? I don't know. But so I don't know. I think so. You have Andre Day, I have Viola Davis. I could see me picking Andre Day, uh, for sure. I just I don't know. I think that we didn't even mention, like, you know, it would be like, yeah, like um. Renee Zellweger won, right, for playing Judy Garland. Uh, Mary Cotillard won. There's like a long history of uh, actresses playing. Oh yeah, like, it's just like like doomed songstresses. Right, and like, and like so is, and Viola Davis is also playing a songstress, but like no offense to Ma Rainey, like probably more people know Billie Holiday, right, than Ma Rainey, yeah. I would argue, uh, in, the, in the culture, even if they're like, not comparable, like whatever. Yeah, like traditionally, like she just has the type of performance that has won this award mm -hmm. and you know other categories as well and I mean then you just kind of you know sometimes think about like the membership is getting more diverse like how much will that affect things like is, is are they kind of cut into like you know maybe like the old guard who would typically vote for this type of performance like would they vote for someone like Carrie Mulligan who has a very atypical winning performance mm -hmm. 
so like not super baby like and right. anti heroin so like i i think she's still in first i, th- I think because i think she still has like three thousand people picking yes her. yes so I don't know if she'll ever fall out of it before the Oscars, but I think Viola has since like surged to second. I also wonder if, and I, I kind of thought like for Viola, my reasoning part of it is also like, she should have a best actress, right? Like she oh, already yeah, no, has no one, actress. No one would be upset if she won. No one would be upset Oscar. if she won. And like, it's like Viola Davis should be a best actress winner, not just best supporting actress, right? But I'm like, I wonder if do people actually care about that distinction. It's like, she already won an Oscar pretty recently. So maybe some people are just not as apt to vote for her this year and they'll pick on today. I mean, I that's know. also like, that applies to Francis too, where she was right. two and both in lead and one right. more recent than Viola even. So, right. yeah, like I haven't, like I still have Francis in four, like, you know, winning BAFTA was great, obviously, but she also won in the absence of like three people who you could argue are mm-hmm. in front of her in the best actress race. So it's like, she still hasn't beaten any of them besides Vanessa. <laughs> head right. on you know and uh, i know after after bafta was a lot of it was like oh well carrie mulligan would have won if she was yeah nominated. that's just it's just i mean you could say that about anything like hypothetically it's like andrew Certainly. they would have won if she had made sag you know right. so i mean and, you know and, and tell yourself that if you need to predict her <laughs> so, well i feel like I people are know. telling themselves that because they want yeah. to predict her but i, I also mean, you, think like you know if she was the more important thing than winning is the 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 profile boost, I would argue, right? Like, yeah. you know, it's like, it doesn't, nobody's like, you know, people care that she won BAFTA or whoever wins these awards, like they're important. But I think that the bigger thing is like being like, you won, so you get to say like you won. And like, so even if she would have won, which I could see the argument for, because like the jury system was, you know, a lot more limited. And then the Promising a Woman obviously overperformed, like we said, it's still like she needed to win there. She needed to be nominated and win for it to actually count, not like, well, she would have won. So yeah, yeah I don't know. It, imagine how, or if at all differently, this would have gone if the Globes hadn't moved Promising a Woman from comedy to drama. Like if, like she, I mean, again, hypothetical, like she probably would have won the Comedy Actress Globe. It seems likely that she would have won a Comedy Actress and then we would have said like her versus Andre Day and she would have won it Critics' Choice. And now all of a sudden it would make a lot more two. sense. Yeah, even so if she, have two. she got to read out of BAFTA, she would still have two. She can have three. So like, there is a case to be made that she could win. And like, again, wouldn't be surprised, but I just feel like, and again, this is totally anecdotal. It just feels like more people are talking about Andre Day and Viola Davis than they are Carrie Mulligan, except for the very vocal, excited Carrie Mulligan stands like on, on, <laughs> on social media, right? And like, that's who's like, very much keeping the, the dream alive for her Oscar. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a definitely fun. I I could see just sitting here. I'm like maybe I'll talk myself into Carrie Mulligan again. I don't know. I, I don't. Like, I, she's I don't. Girl, know. She's not out of it. Like last week when she lost, I like you know a lot of people were like it's between like Andrew and Viola. I'm like no, Carrie is still in it. Like it's not like Viola can win BAFTA or can <laughs> right. win BAFTA. You know, like none of them can win the next one. Um, and clearly, I don't know if like I don't know if they're equally strong or equally weak but like no one has like overwhelming passion that we've seen and um this is definitely one of the years where i wish they showed the vote tallies because i feel like it's going to be like 28 percent to like 27 oh, yeah. percent to like 25 you know what i mean like just like very very close i um, i've always wanted to see like the globe tallies because it's like 87 people i'm mm-hmm. like how many people just won by one vote <laughs> yeah like i feel like this year you're gonna get i feel like it's in that best actress race it could be any anybody whoever wins is going to have won by like a very slim margin yeah and Uh, like that's probably just gonna be the the one category that's gonna make or break everybody's predictions (laughs) for sure we could talk about the other the other big BAFTA headline or another big BAFTA headline was Anthony Hopkins like you said won best actor over Chadwick Boseman my counterintuitive take on that is actually that's better for Chadwick Boseman because now he, he you know people are like like anybody who would have been like, oh, I don't need to vote for him. He's going to win anyway, you know, are going to be like, oh, I better vote for him because he could actually lose. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think like that will help elevate. I mean, there's, there's like two His sides team. to that. Cause then there's some people who are just like, Tony won that cause he's British, you know, like right. obviously, you know, we should have right. seen that coming, but like, it, it's really funny. How, like on Saturday, like the first day of the awards, like 
you know, Ma Rainey won two um, hairstyling and makeup yeah. and costumes, and it only had three nominations. The other one was Chad. And so people were like, oh my God, it's going to go three for three. Like it's, it's going to clean up and it, it might go like four for five at the Oscars. Cause no one, I mean, you know, some people, I know some people predicted uh, Anthony Hopkins for the BAFTA, but most people thought it was just straight sweep for Chadwick Boseman and he lost that. So I like, it does confirm that Ma Rainey is weak, like which we knew cause it missed adapted mm-hmm. screenplay and best picture at the Oscars. And it, it performed similarly at the BAFTA is like, you know, it, it it wasn't going to make the five best picture nominees at BAFTA, but also didn't get adapted screenplay. And obviously Viola got juried out. So, and it lost <laughs> best actor, which it was, you know, supposed to win. Like everyone thought he was going to win. Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago when the father was finally readily available to the masses on like VOD and how people are watching it and loving Anthony Hopkins and, you know, just tweeting overwhelming praise. But was that just like the Twitter bubble or is it, you know, expansive to like voters in the industry? And maybe it is like, you know, this could be like another like Glenn Close and Olivia Coleman situation where you like maybe assume like one person is safe. So then you actually vote for your favorite or who you think like gave the better performance. Right. But now that I don't think people think, I think that because he lost, people are going to be like, he's not safe. And I'm going to pick Chadwick. That's my, well, like, I mean, like Glenn lost BAFTA to Olivia too. Right. That's true. That's true. And she still so. lost. I don't know. I just, I was, I'm not surprised that uh, Chadwick lost, I guess, at BAFTA. Just like, like, not just because Anthony Hopkins Bridge, but I also think like Ma Rainey is like a very American story. And I wonder how it, like the August Wilson stuff translates, you know, to like a British audience, if it does at all. So I was like, well, I could see that, but I don't know. I st- I'm not changing my pick there. I'm going to have Chadwick Boseman. I will go down with the, with him uh, winning. I think he's going to win. I just think it, it would I mean, be very surprising if he lost. He's, he's the safest choice. But... And I also think that if there is a number two, I'm not even sure. I know Anthony Hopkins won BAFTA, but I still think like Riz Ahmed would be a stronger overall number two, maybe. And I think that the fact that he's there as a number two would actually hurt Anthony Hopkins because there not, might not be a consensus between who to put above Chadwick of that. But like now, players. but now that Anthony Hopkins has won an award, maybe people are like, oh, so he's going to be like the alternative. Like maybe. <laughs> I feel like Riz Ahmed is like very much beloved. I feel like he's beloved and like has been everywhere. Yeah, he is. Like he's, he's definitely campaigning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Anthony like Hopkins. that's why I think like he'll still like, he would end up siphoning off some of Anthony Hopkins' support, even with the back to win. I still think like that's possible. I mean, I think like, I mean, I love both of them. Like they're like Riz and like Anthony, like those were like my favorite performances of this category. So like, I'll be happy if like either of them won. Um, like I, I feel like but Riz is just kind of welcome to the club nomination. Right yeah, he, and, he is. I mean, I don't think either of them are going to win. I'm just like, yeah. I think and then like, gonna... you know, Anthony Hopkins on mm-hmm. our hand, you know, like he's also someone who feels like should have two Oscars. Like by yes, Davis. Like true. no one would argue that, you know, no. and it's been 29 years since he last won. I still don't think it's enough. I think, I think Chadwick, you're not going to change that pick. Are you? No way. Are you going to I mean, I haven't game? changed it. I don't like it's, I think it'll depend on like what I do with Best Actress, not that like that's any more clear. <laughs> right. You know, but if I'm going to like take a risk on Best Actress, I don't know, that it depends. Or maybe if we see any more like anecdotes about people just loving Anthony Hopkins more, not that you should just change your predictions based on what these anonymous ballot voters yeah. pick, it's like 20 people, if that, so... But I think it gives you a sense of how it's it's more so like what they say about it, not just like what they um, how they vote. Like if they're like, oh, I love blah blah blah, but I'm gonna vote for this person instead. But what if like someone else feels that same way and they actually end up voting for like Anthony Hopkins, you know, right. or Riz Ahmed? Right. I I don't know. I I mean I think you're right, but I still think Chadwick is gonna win. And then the other ones we had uh, Dana Kaluuya sweep clean. Who's gonna be the only sweeper? <laughs> Great. So he'll he'll definitely win. And uh, yeah, Jung Yoon will win also. She won. So that was a big her, win. That was yeah. really good. Now leads me to our uh, the to the best picture race where I'm going back now. Daniel actually wrote about this for the site after the Baptist. Can Minari win over Nomadland? Is there enough support for it? I mean, I've I've had it in second this whole time. Um, Same. So, 
like and and you know like on and like our odds ever since the spotlight year the movie that was in second has won best picture so again uh, anecdotal but like if you look at like the L- the la times oscar voters thing and just from what we've been hearing it seems like minari has shown up on all of these like anonymous lists people like like it's very well liked and nomadland yeah. uh has not it's in that la times are like it's more the focus has been like chloe Zhao. like it's all chloe uh that that is where the enthusiasm for that movie is and i wonder if that's enough to knock it off of best picture will it like in a preferential ballot will it actually her win like is so assured and people are so excited about her and her career that they're just like the movie's good but i i like this other movie better I don't have, I have not changed my pick yet, but I am like moving. This is like the first of like three conversations where I'm like, I'm changing my pick from though. <laughs> but maybe not yet. <laughs> but maybe not yet, but maybe I will. No, uh, like, it's really I, I would not be, because like the thing is, you know, we were kind of, it's kind of crazy how like supporting actress went from like unclear to like mm-hmm. it's a done deal with yes. that week. Um, right. but like, I'm, I'm pretty confident that like Yo Jung Yoon is winning that now. Um, yeah. she's taking the, the Cape Blanchett aviator route, just winning SAG mm-hmm. and BAFTA and on her way to Oscar. So, um, and she's giving, you know, like A plus speeches. <laughs> so yeah. cannot he, wait for she, her. Speech. She's the best, like far and away the best part of this whole award. Yeah. Season. Like just vote for her for her speeches. Yes. Um, but now like, I feel like, you know, Minati is like assured a win because before we're like, what was it going to win? Like it's, it's favored and best mm-hmm. supporting actress. Like it's probably not going to win original screenplay. It's not even nominated for editing. It's not winning director. So it, it could have like, you know, one win and best picture, which sounds insane. Um, but you know, that's like what Spotlight did. Right. Um, and and like it so. won't win like, like Moonlight won three, right? So yeah. it wouldn't win, like the other not win for this would have been like a screenplay win, but Minari's not going to win there because Promise of a Woman seemed like it's going to win. And like- I mean, we, like it could maybe win score, but I don't think it's going to Score, gonna I don't think so. I would be, right. it, it's going to get Bertelled in score. It right. should win, but it's not right. going to win. So I'm like, it could win two in the best picture. I mean, like, I don't know. I, the thing I've always, the reason I'm not- moved off of Nomadland beyond like the massive historical precedent where it's won literally every single thing uh, it could basically, um, including at the Baptist, is that like, there just didn't seem like there was a movie that had as like a consensus enthusiasm pick, right? Like a yeah. Parasite or a Moonlight or something where it was like, well, there's a strong number two. And while Minari hasn't won really anything uh, like, similarly to Moonlight, right? Like it didn't win at, at SAG, it didn't, you know, it's not winning. Things. It won an individual SAG, not ensemble. It won an individual SAG, not ensemble. Uh, it was ineligible, just like Nomadland at WGA. Right. And won it, it, it it's won a ton of foreign film awards. Right, it, it's like, it's not, but I'm like, I think- Yeah, I had them on a, a best picture outside of like a, a critics like- Right. Win. I just feel like though, anecdotally, it does feel like it's the movie that people really like and like, weirdly like this last week I feel like I've seen a lot of like Bill Maher headlines about like how he's like these movies are all depressing and they all suck right and, and like he people also really spoiled it for everyone <laughs> and I'm just like okay like that's not even true but I'm like if you're even going with that like Minari is actually the most uh I don't know hopeful movie of the group I'd argue yeah. right like it's like actually like really it, it ends on a it, I wouldn't say like comp- it's it's uplifting. It's, it's uplifting. It's not a happy ending. It's not a yeah, happy. Yeah, like but it's uplifting. like it's it's, like, it's positive. It's it's like sound of metal. Yes. You know. But like, also, so I'm like, but it's yeah, it's not. So I'm like, maybe that's the one that like people kind of rally around and like. Yeah. I mean, it's not like Parasite had a much happier ending. <laughs> like, no, Parasite had that you know that great like enthusiasm at the end. Yeah, right? like, like we're that, gonna that's walk out of it. Completely different like, type of movie, movies. but it's not like right. that had because that was like his whole point. Like these movies are like depressing. And, right. Like, so I'm like, you know. <laughs> I'm like maybe it's maybe Minari then ends up getting like a little boost from that, and I'm like, does is there a fatigue setting in on Nomadland because we've been talking about it for almost a year, basically, right? Like eight or not eight months. Uh, certainly maybe that's why I'm like deciding again, like trying to think of ways to pick against it. Uh, but I'm like, are people like voters being like, we're still talking about this? I'll like, you know, like who knows? So 
I don't know. I, I could see that being erased. That said, it would be, I was just looking, it would be like our odds. It's like no man land just locked in. And I think for every 19 people uh, who have it, who are picking, or for every 20 people who are picking best picture, 19 are picking Nomadland, basically. Yeah, and I think I think Trial <laughs> has moved up to second since the SAG. Which doesn't make a lot of sense, even no. as the world's probably biggest Sh- Trial of Chicago 7 fan, the side <laughs> of Aaron Sorkin's family. Uh, if you don't think it'll win, it has no chance. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think it will. It would, be, it would be very nice if it did, but I just don't think it will. I mean, like, the, the SAG win, it, it just, I said this last week, like, it just reminds mm-hmm. me of those you know, previous SAG ensemble wins where you know, like, they're not going to win Best Picture. Right. Like, Inglorious yeah, Bastards, The Help, American figures. Hustle, like, yeah, Hidden Figures, like, you know, it's just not going to translate that way. And I'm telling you, the, the key to a SAG win is, like, a 70, a 60s to 70s period piece. That is, like, a goldmine for SAG. They love it. Well, my my theory that, I mean, I like, I, I think you, you can kind of see the trend anyway, that, like, it, the ensemble wins kind of, like, deviated from that, um, being it's never really been predictive since it's about like the acting ensemble, not best picture. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, since the merger with after, I just feel like these, these after people are just kind of affecting like obviously the results cause they're voting, but it's just, it, it's, they, they become even more populist and broad. And, you know, that's why like we haven't had like an, an individual um, non-English language performance right. nominated until this year with uh, Yoon Young Yun. Um, you know, and partially like Stephen Young and, you know, she actually won. So that, that was huge, but yeah, I don't think, I think I have trial in fourth, <laughs> like it's, it's still there in fourth, like, and I have promising young woman in third, like no man land. Like I, you know, yeah, like it's, it's been the front runner this whole time. So yeah. Like if there's like fatigue or like, if there are, there is like some apathy towards it from people, like, I think it, it can be dethroned, but like, like you said, there's no obvious alternative that's emerged and the thing is no man in any other year would be that alternative to like the bigger right. beast you know yes. like it would be that moonlight to a la la land but there's no yes. la la land this year it is it is weird it's a weird that it's the front runner because it's, it's so the david and the goliath <laughs> right it's, it's very very odd i just am like yeah i could just see people being like I guess, like we said, like the reason people would vote against it or just wouldn't vote for it is because they're just like, well, Chloe Zhao is going to win. She's great. Do we need like the movie? I was like, you know, I could see people, especially after all the hype. If you're just watching Nomadland now for the first time, uh, it's been on Hulu for weeks, but welcome to watching it. Uh, I would say like, maybe you're like, what's the, what's the fuss about? Right, like if you just after like hearing if it's, it's like, one, you know, a lot of people are just like Francis McDormand on a road trip. Right, and, and it's they're like, not entertained by that. Right, no, I I watched it twice. I think it's great. Like, but I'm like, I could just see, and again, maybe then the consensus ends up being Minari. I don't know. I know. Well, the thing is, it's like, how are people ranking these too? You know. And well, that's the other thing we like. Yeah, because like this is, I mean, we we've not talked about this. I don't think together, but like definitely like a great roster of best picture nominees right like when we would you just kind of mention this like going through the rankings it's hard like we were saying like oh it would be nice to bump judas and the black messiah yeah right? like i want to move it up but i don't know like <laughs> where are you gonna move it so like i look I, I think we might have the same i'm gonna remind you tell me if this is yours too but my ranking right now would be nomad land minari promise young woman chicago seven sound of metal Judas and the Black Messiah is six, The Father seven, and Mank eight. I have No Man Minotti, Promising Young Woman, Chicago, The Father, Sound of Metal, Judas, and Mank. Wow. So, okay. You're yeah. way higher on The Father than I am. I think I, I, put, I, I, I was like, you know, I, I still believe in The Father, even though in this, like all those guilds, like I, I predicted all the Oscar nominations it got. So once it got that, I was like, I'm putting it in fifth. I don't care. No, <laughs> and now like, that like Anthony list. Hopkins won the BAFTA, so. Um, and I wonder and I if that it, also helps and maybe helps and hurts, helps Nomadland is because there is so many, all the movies are good. There's no consensus for what the number two is, right? Like, it's just like, yeah. well, they're all good, you know? Like, I don't know. Yeah, so I don't, and then it's just like, if someone doesn't put Nomadland at first, where are they going to put it? And you just, don't know. you don't know what people like. They could like and hate movies for the dumbest reasons. <laughs> so, right, it could be just because they didn't work with somebody on the movie they didn't yeah, like Yeah, like or, someone was a bitch to them. And yeah, they, like, they saw it like in a, like, the more, like, you know, like I, and I'm also always, always wondering how often do they give something a chance? Like the first time I watched, like up to, like this is a personal anecdote for me. Uh, I watched Nomadland on a screener 
casting it from my laptop to my TV. It kept herking and jerking the whole time. I was like, this sucks. And I was like, I like the movie. But I was like, there's not a way to watch it. And then it came out on Hulu and I was like, I'm just going to watch it on Hulu. And uh, it was great without the stuttering of the screen. You need to appreciate I was like, the oh, cinematography. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know, who knows? But I'm like, the Oscar voters give it that second chance if like the tech doesn't work or if they're just like getting interrupted by a phone call, are they going to go back? Who knows? Yeah, who knows I mean, that's the other react. thing because like because of this year, it's like, how are they consuming these movies? And, you know, mm-hmm. we've seen like reports and, you know, yeah. like anecdotes about how people just don't care this year just because, you know, of the state of the world right. and they haven't watched a lot. And obviously the public knowledge of these movies, it's very low um it's definitely gonna be the lowest <laughs> rated Oscar oh, yeah. in history so it it's yeah like I could see some people maybe even like abstaining from voting in certain categories just because they haven't you know like I, I do appreciate when people abstain from voting in categories because they're they don't have enough knowledge or mm-hmm. they haven't seen everything I do like that so but if it's true that these people aren't really into the race this year then I, I don't know like where are they gonna maybe they only saw like three movies and no man wasn't one of them right <laughs> who knows uh two I want to go to two more things here and before we wrap up best adapted screenplay I have the father, the father could win too I, I have it winning and do you have it winning too or no I haven't switched to it yet, but I'm, I'm, you, so you switched from No My Land to The Father? I did. I, I think I switched yeah. uh, probably after BAFTAs, but I was, I, I think it's going to win. I think, again, when you're looking at No Bad Land. It's not it, really a writerly movie. It's not a writerly movie, or it's not what you would consider a writer, even if, you know what I mean? Like, it's just it's like, I don't think that that is the thing that people are walking away from it from. And I think The Father has much more of that, like, this is, a writerly movie it's based on a play you know based on his own play yeah. and stuff I'm like I could see it so I I have it winning I think that and and if I don't have it winning anywhere else and like you said it is a strong movie and like people do really like it is it gonna lose everywhere maybe not and then I don't wins. know there's so many movies with six nominations <laughs> so like I'm like I'm gonna roll the dice that it wins one of those six and it's screenplay yeah I keep like I'm, I'm thinking of like two previous races that are like the complete opposite of or not really but like like yeah I agree that like if they want to award like the father this is probably like the easiest place to award it you know like and we've talked about like how you know like for a movie that that's like well liked but is not winning best picture you give the consolation prize in writing Mm -hmm. like promising a woman you know right so I could see that but I don't again I don't know how many people like think that way like oh, like, I want to give the father something, so I'll vote for it here, even though I really like, like, No Man Land. Um, but then I'm also thinking of, like, the Berman year, when, like, Grand Budapest Hotel was winning a ton of screenplay awards, and then it lost, and, like, you know, uh, at the Oscars, like, Berman swept everything, and I don't, no one really considers Berman, like, a writing feat, but that was just, like, the movie that the industry love that completely turned once you know pj announced because it was like boyhood up until then mm-hmm. and they have to still give it a boyhood but so i could see like no man land winning that way um and then um but like yeah like i could see it also like if like again like two years ago when like uh people thought like the favorite was like basically a lock in original screenplay and that was like where it was going to win because like Glenn was winning Best Actress, but then it was like the opposite. Like it lost the original screenplay and won Best Actor. So could that happen to the father too? Like we think this is the category it's going to win. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still going. And I'm going with the father, right? <laughs> I think. Yeah, I probably, I'll probably switch to it. Um, also, like I just want kind of more excitement because I feel like these other categories are pretty boring because it's well the other guy i want to talk about which i feel like you and i should definitely take a victory lap for even if it, at this point is best song i feel like we really we can never we have the curve. that song like best actress <laughs> yeah we were ahead of the curve on Husevik. uh and it's we really like, were because we we've, we've been beating that drum like pre-nominations yeah so. and it seems like i think it's really coalescing around who's to win I, I just think that's gonna happen I, uh, I feel like better about it because like, you know, anecdotally we've heard some people say they prefer that over, you know, three end credits on, or four end credits on right. rather. Um, yeah, Hoosevik is like, 
and it, it actually is a part of the movie. Uh, it's a really- uh, Yeah, I think I'll like do something about that too. Like I'll write something about that, like how it's, you know, like those don't always win, but I think in this case, when it's like the only one, that really helps and also it's just like I know it's subjective but it is the best song <laughs> it is the best song and like, they're actually all not bad like, I actually don't think the songs are that bad this year but like they're not they're, they're not like terrible they're songs. very samey yeah and they're very Vic samey like, not and same. the messaging of three of them are similar and yeah I, I guess like you know I think Speak Now is still in first but I think that's just because it's been in first this whole time and I don't yeah, know. Speak now, and then like, I think uh, IOC from Life Ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Pacific, I think, is running last in our odds. I can't imagine that uh, last for Dude. long, though. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like, again, like, I don't think anyone is thinking, like, oh, Leslie Odom Jr. is now winning supporting actor, so he's, we'll vote for him here for the no. song. Um, and I don't, Diane, I mean, poor Diane Warren. <laughs> I just wonder, I, I know that Al Pacino won for Scent of Woman and that's like a go-to for people like, oh, Miss Makeup Oscar, like who cares? And like not giving it to the best thing. But I'm like, I wonder if like, does that still exist? Like, are we just going to give like Glenn Close in the same so. boat? Like, you're not, do you really want to give Glenn Close an Oscar for Hillbilly Elegy? Do you really want to give Diane Warren an Oscar for Life I Had No Offense in the Song? But like, she's had so many other incredible songs that I would say this is on the, the lower end of her nomination songs like wouldn't you rather have given it to her for one of the great all-time great songs I don't know yeah I mean I guess it depends on like if you're like a stan of that person and you, and you just right. want to be called an Oscar winner no matter what it doesn't like you know that's the, the other thing like m most people don't know what everyone's won an Oscar for they just that's know you're, like if they see Oscar winner before your name maybe they, they assume you won for a certain project, but it's like, and also most people don't win for their best project or their best performance. No, that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. Like with Diane, I, I guess she could kind of like default her way to a win here too. Um, but I feel like she's just kind of turning into like a filler nominee. Um, yeah, and yeah. I think she's, she's going to need like, like a hit song from like a moderately well-received movie to win I think um yeah and like I don't I don't think like the Italian language thing is like is a barrier in any way but I, like it is a good song I, I just yeah I they're know. actually all good songs it yeah. just is like I just think that none of them are hits <laughs> um and you know we don't have a shallow or anything or like a let it go so it's yeah I mean it's similar to last year but last year it was like you know you had bigger stars involved <laughs> like it's like Elton John default so yeah, not the song you would ever remember Elton John for, but glad he won an Oscar, I guess. I mean, like, what was it called? <laughs> I don't even remember what it was called, to be perfectly like, honest. I've got to love I, you tonight. <laughs> remember the, the Randy Newman performance? Yes. Uh, <laughs> man, Incredible. Joyce, any, any, uh, before we wrap up, any last, uh, any last things you want to shout out here before we get into? Um, I, don't, I don't know. What else is there to discuss? Or I guess like on, on the subject of song, you know, there's uh, apparently the songs will be performed pre-show. How do you Yes, I heard that? that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they're calling it the Oscars cast. Stoderberg yeah. really leaning into the uh, movie idea of the Oscars. I mean, you know, yesterday they announced the cast of presenters, mm -hmm. so they're they're going to be themselves, I guess. I hope yeah, they I'm do excited. a full credits. <laughs> I'm excited for it. I think like we, it's definitely going to be the lowest rated Oscars of all time by like a wide margin. I think no one is going to really watch relatively speaking, uh, but I'm very excited to watch it because I think like it's actually going to be good. I actually think the show is going to be good. Yeah, I see. I think like they've always like they're misguided. Like, I don't know if it's like producers or like ABC or whatever, but like they want, I understand they want everyone, the general public to watch, but I feel like they should also remember that like you have a core base of like Oscar nuts like us like right. make it for us and this is the perfect year to make it for us <laughs> I think they that's, don't know I, like these like the general public is so unfamiliar with these movies um like make, make it for us this year like you know it's gonna be the lowest rated one <laughs> you know that's, I've, been, I've, been, I've been saying that for years we lost the idea of a mass uh, event that people are gonna watch is like literally- It's not like the 90s a, anymore. <laughs> no, it's like it's like the Super Bowl and then that's it. Everything else is just like yeah. a niche audience of people really enthusiastic about something. And I'm like, that's what we are for the Oscars. 
So make, make it for, it for us. us. Make it four hours. I don't care. <laughs> it could be four hours. Like put the songs before. I don't need to see that. And like, yeah, it's gonna be great. I'm I'm way in. I'm very excited to see this. And we'll see uh, what other presenters I guess they add. Uh, there's no host, but I'm sure since it's on ABC, they'll probably. Cycle I mean, are they are they already something. tipping their hand by booking Halle Berry? <laughs> well, that's what they're certainly trying to do, right? I would imagine. I mean, uh, I'm assuming they're still going to do the tradition of like, you know, the opposite gender acting winners presenting this year, you know, so like Joaquin will do best actress, but. And they all are there. They all, yeah, all of them all are from the back, right? Back. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. So it's, but like they, they booked Halle Berry. <laughs> so, but I, mean, I also hate when they try to be cute like that because they think someone's going to win. And sometimes it works out like with Scorsese. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like. With director, Aaron. yeah. Yeah, but then it's like you had like Harrison Ford presenting Shakespeare in Love, Best Picture, <laughs> instead of Saving Private Ryan, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't like when they like, you know, book presenters and give them a category in which they have a relationship with a nominee or like their film is nominated in that category. Right. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, all right, Joyce, this is fun. We'll talk to you next week. Okay. Switch Bye. best actress to Andra or someone else. <laughs> I will. Yeah. By this time next week, he'll be Andra and then maybe Carrie and then Violet again and then whatever. All right. Bye. <laughs>